But uh, my first reaction uh, in doing that study was uh, uh, one of fear. Because I liked GW. I was working for him. And I, I started on the study for purposes of finding out what it was going to be like for him. And what I noticed is, and in these 15 years of researching this subject, what has only been confirmed is that if a firstborn son is named after the father, or if he's brought in the White House to work for the father, which happened on several occasions, or he is in some other way positioned as the heir apparent, they die. <laughs> well, we all die, but they die young. And John Adams II, for example, died an alcoholic at 31. William Henry Harrison, Jr. died uh, an alcoholic at 35. Andrew Johnson, Jr. died at 26. Calvin Coolidge, Jr. died at 16. He was injured on the White House tennis courts. He developed a blister and uh, uh, turned to septicemia, blood poisoning, and he died. Andrew Jackson, Jr. was killed in a hunting accident, died of lockjaw after a hunting accident. I could go on and on and on. It just... Uh, it's uncanny. There's a few. There's a few juniors that survived. A good example is Teddy Roosevelt Jr. He lived to be 54. That's old for an heir apparent. But he tried. I mean, uh, he, he was so reckless that Teddy Roosevelt once told his wife that if he survives to adulthood, it'll be a miracle. And uh, I've got a picture in the book, All the President's Children, that shows T.R. Jr. jumping the fence on a horse with T.R. watching on. He was very reckless. In World War I, T.R. Jr. was uh, wounded twice. In World War II, he was in the heat of battle. He was the first in the landings in North Africa. And, you know, if you study a lot of World War II, the North Africa landings seem pretty tame. I mean, it seems like they came up to the dock and they all walked off. But T.R. Jr. killed somebody on the beach. He, he shot a German in the head in hand-to-hand -hand combat on the beach. He was the first to land in Sicily with the first wave in Sicily. And, of course, he was a general by that time. He was in the first wave that landed on D-Day, and he was the only general to land with his troops in the first day and the first wave in the D-Day invasion. In fact, in the movie The Longest Day, Henry Fonda plays T.R. Jr., and he stands out there on the beach with his cane. He's hobbling around, and these bullets are whizzing by him. Uh, General Ab Abr Abrams was asked at one point what was the bravest act he'd ever seen in his life, and he said it was, it was T.R. Jr., the story of T.R. Jr. standing out on that beach in Normandy. And so he stood there, uh, a man in his 50s, with his cane directing the young people who were landing on the beaches of Normandy where to go and where the German uh, machine gun nests were and what to avoid with bullets whizzing all around him. So he tried, <laughs> uh, but he died of a heart attack at 54 uh, a few months after Normandy and was awarded the Medal of Honor. So I was um, disturbed. Uh, by what I found. Higher than average uh, rates of divorce, higher than average rates of alcoholism, higher than average rates of premature death. And my boss was named after his father, too. Uh, so I presented this study to him uh, rather timidly because I knew him and I know that, you know, he can't be uh, stampeded into anything and he doesn't, he's understated and as his pop and the whole family is. So. I just kind of gave it without comment, and he looked through it a little bit. And The only comment that he had, at one point, I, there was a very eerie mirror between the George Bush family, senior, and the Franklin D. Roosevelt family, in that each had four boys and a daughter, and each had a sixth child that died in, uh, early. One of the Roosevelts went west, and so did one of the Bushes. One of the Roosevelts went to Florida and was elected to office, and one of the Bushes had gone to Florida and was Secretary of Commerce at the time. And FDR Jr. went home to New York, the home state, to run for governor. And it was no secret that GW was thinking about that. So he asked me, it was the only question he asked about the study, he said, well, what happened to FDR Jr.? I said he lost. And I said, in fact, no presidential son has ever been elected governor. And he groaned, and that was his only reaction. And then it went into file 13. And for 15 years, I've been clipping and pasting uh, and correcting my 44-page memo, which has become a 600-page memo. But uh, when John F. Kennedy Jr. 
disappeared over the Atlantic, I had chills go down my spine because I thought this is not a coincidence of history. This has happened over and over and over again. Uh, there is stress on these young people. Uh, from the time they're little children, people come up to them and say, well, when are you going